So here we go, people. The first team news of the Rugby World Cup 2023 is out. France and New Zealand have named their teams for the opener on Friday night. Two strong teams, but that's what I'm getting into in this video, talking about both team selections, some of the interesting points, but you can drop a comment down below. Let me know what you make of these match day 23s. And also, who do you think is going to win this game? Does what you've seen in these team selections make you change your mind or has it just reinforced what you thought already was going to happen? So make sure you let me know. Also, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. So let's start with the home team, the French. They named their squad earlier this afternoon. So starting off in the front row, Wadi, Marchand, Antonio, Woki and Flamont are a fairly athletic second row combination. And then Crow, Olivon and Aldrit, the back row. Dupont, obviously, the scrum half. He's also the captain. Jalabert, in the absence of Untermac, is at fly half. Yoram Mofana, he comes in at inside centre in the place of Jonathan Dante. Gail Fiku is outside him at outside centre. And the back three, Villiers, Penno and Ramos. In terms of the bench, you've got uh, Muvaka and Gro and Oldegary covering the front row. Taufi Fanua and Boudion, also the forwards replacements. And then Luku, Vincent and Jamine covering the backs. A number of interesting things probably to get into in terms of that team selection for the French. Obviously, no Willemse, no Untermac, no Dante. They are big, big losses for the home nation, but it's still a really, really strong side. I think actually this whole squad and this selection is probably a fair way from what Fabien Gautier would have wanted to select as his first team for the World Cup on home soil, but is also a reflection of the depth that they've built over the last four years. Since the 2019 World Cup, there's so many players. The game is in such a good place in terms of professionally and grassroots in France that they have built a really, really strong squad. Mo Farnar in for Dante, we'll get on to him. And also the 5-3 split on the bench, I think it's quite fascinating as well. I think it's almost the sensible, safer option to go with. It covers more bases, but we have often seen France go with the 6-2 split over the last four years. They do change, to be fair. They do fluctuate. It's not completely out of the blue for them to go 5-3, but I thought that was just kind of interesting in itself. Let's get on to the All Blacks team and then we'll go through our thoughts. So De Groot, Taylor and Lau Lala as the front row. Obviously Lomax injured. That's a big, big loss for the All Blacks. White Lock and Barrett in the second row. Papa Lihi, Kane and Sarvea the back row. Aaron Smith and Mwanga the halfbacks with Leonard Brown and Yuani in the centres. No Geordie Barrett, who has also picked up a little injury as well. So that's a massive blow, I think, for the All Blacks. And then Talea, Jordan and Barrett, the back three. Uh, Takiaho, Tuanga Fasi and Null as the front row replacements. Vai and Jacobson also named as well with Christy, Havili and Fainga and Nuku as the replacements for the All Blacks. So... I think the temptation with both teams here is probably to look at the missing players. And there's no question that if you look at the All Blacks and you talk about Lomax, you talk about Geordie Barrett, they're, they're big, big losses for them. Retallick as well, obviously, who we kind of already knew about was injured. And the same with Shannon Frizzell. And likewise for the French, Willemse, Dante, Untermac, the, the players that I've mentioned already. But rather than focusing purely on the players that aren't there, let's try and have a look at the players that are and ask ourselves, where is this game going to be won? And I do think you need to, to at least to a degree, look at the, the absence of Dante and Willemse in terms of the physicality that they bring. I know Mofana is a good option. He often, when Dante hasn't been available, has come into that French team. Plus, he has Gael Fiku outside him, who's really, really experienced at this point in his career. But I think Dante's just so good that he is a loss. And also, Willemse, when you look at that second row pairing of Wocky and Flamont, again, I know those guys have started together before in the second row, but it is a lighter, more athletic second row combination. And I think they could potentially miss the kind of heft of, of Willemse in there. And it's still interesting to me to see Taufi Fanua as an option on the bench rather than as a starter. Because if you paired him with Flamont, for example, or Woki, then you probably have the that better combination. But they have gone for a little bit more athleticism in that second row. And I think that could be key. I think the first 20 minutes of this game is going to be fascinating. Because if the All Blacks can start anywhere close to how they started a number of games in the Rugby Championship, then France is going to be in for a pretty tough evening. But if they're not, and France can get on top early, if they can get the crowd behind them, then it's the All Blacks that are going to be in for a fairly tough affair. So I think that first 20 minutes will be absolutely crucial. From the All Blacks perspective, two open sides. I think that is a 
A fascinating part of their selection in Sam Kane and Dalton Papalihi. Papalihi hasn't started a huge amount at blindside, which is where he's playing here. Is it purely through injuries or is it something tactical that the All Blacks have seen that they want to go really hard at the breakdown or the, those two players' games they think could be particularly useful for combating what they're going to come up against in the Stade de France? That's certainly something that I think it's probably worth keeping an eye on. And then the other thing just to mention, which is perhaps the most obvious matchup in this whole World Cup, but you kind of can't stray away from it, is the nines. Antoine Dupont against Aaron Smith. In Antoine Dupont, you have who many people would regard as the best player in the world at the moment, who is on the cusp of captaining this French team. And if they are able to win a home World Cup, obviously cementing his legend, certainly in French rugby, but probably in just rugby more generally, we know how good he is. And Aaron Smith, I think, is probably the second best nine in the world, who has a speed of pass. And when he dictates the game, he can be absolutely dominant. So... Who gets on top of that battle? Who can dictate the game better from nine could be absolutely crucial in this match. And I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating. It should be a fantastic occasion, absolutely. And hopefully a fantastic match as well for both of those players and both of these squads. I think it's going to be very, very exciting. So drop a comment down below. How do you see it going? I think it's two interesting team selections. I really, really do. Obviously, Geordie Barrett has been so good for the All Blacks as well. Over the last couple of years, he's arguably been one of their most consistent backs. So there are storylines wherever you look at this. Jonathan Dante, I think, is one of the best players in the French team. So the two 12s missing, how do the guys that come in, in Mofana and Lennart Brown, how do they step up for that? Varying experience of those two players, but both of them quality, no doubt. You look at the back three, it's packed full of quality, and you look at the packs that on their day can be incredibly physical and incredibly dominant. I suppose one other thing to mention in terms, well, I suppose both teams, because Cyril Bai is missing for the French as well and Lomax is missing for the All Blacks, but how that front row battle looks like, or even the front five battle and the scrums, the set piece, that kind of area of the game, again, is going to be something else that is maybe a little bit of uncertainty for both teams because of the injuries they've sustained to really, really key players. What I will say is I just, for some reason, have a good feeling about the All Blacks in that I think certainly the game at Twickenham has taken a little bit of pressure off them. It has diverted attention elsewhere, probably onto the French and onto the Springboks as well. I still think this is a good All Blacks team. And whilst it might not be the kind of all-conquering All Blacks teams that we've seen in the past, if they get it right at this World Cup, they can beat anyone. And I suppose the luxury for this first game, actually, for both teams is they'll still feel pretty confident of getting out of their group, regardless of who wins on Friday night. And actually, I think it's probably more important for the French to win. And you can let me know if you agree with me here, because I think if France lose at home, you've got to remember they've won, I, I believe it's 23 of their last 24 games at home. The one defeat has been against Scotland in the Six Nations when it was behind closed doors. There was nobody there. So I think there's a few caveats but they've been so good at home. If they lose at home on the opening night of the World Cup, then all of a sudden they're beatable. All of a sudden there's a chink in the armour. Whereas for New Zealand, if they lose, then I think they probably get written off a little bit more. They still get out the pool because I think they'll be good enough to beat every other team. And then they can really aim to target a quarter final against whoever they play, whether it's Ireland, South Africa, or possibly Scotland, if Pool B really does get sort of shuffled and, and thrown on its head. So... Lots of different things to look out for. I think this is a more important game for the French to win. I think they need to remain looking invincible at home. Remember what happened in 2007 when the last time they hosted a World Cup, they lost to Argentina on the opening night and they did get themselves to a semi-final, but I don't think they necessarily ever recovered from that. In crucial for the French, for the All Blacks, maybe less so, whilst obviously it is still important. Two great teams. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Like the video and please, please also subscribe to the channel. That would massively help me out. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to the start of the World Cup. I'll see you in the next one.